Okay, so on this canvas, I have applied three different tints of gesso, which I've blended together. And I'm still working on background because I like a lot of depth in my art. And I have, <coughs> excuse me, I do have a couple of tints of gesso I can use. I think I'll just use one that's a fairly neutral gesso. And for fun and games, I'm going to use tissue paper to apply it rather than paint. The reason why is I want a different effect. I don't want it to look like I've painted it on. Um, so I'm using a whisper green, I think it is. Hang on a second, let me make sure I'm just one. Yeah. So it's, it's almost a beigey color. And um, what I'm going to do with this tissue paper is unfold it because I don't want to use up every single layer that's in here. So unfold it, put the one aside I don't want, and I'm just going to crumple it up and see that rough side? That's what I'm going to put some gesso on with, <coughs> excuse me, my paintbrush, and I'm going to just dab it and then maybe work it a bit in after it's partly dried. This is all trial and error. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's just, I don't know, it comes to me and I like to improvise. So here we go. Um, I'll just dry my paintbrush. And oh, here's a hint for people who are new to um, creativity and, and art and painting. Like this is actually quite an expensive brush. It's a French Ville Pure Bristle. Now, it really holds a lot of paint. So you do have to be careful. I've got this in a few sizes. I wouldn't buy this brand new because it's just purely out of my price range, but I picked it up on Marketplace. So always look on Marketplace for um, better quality paint supplies. Okay, here we go. So I'm dipping the brush, just see, just on the tip, and I'm just going to transfer that onto the actual tissue paper and let's see how this goes for doing. Oh, might help if I hold it. I should probably have that thing lowered, but anyway. And I'm kind of dabbing along the vague lines or boundaries that are already there. Why? Again, I have no idea. <laughs> Just make it up as a goal. So. Dab and dab. And you know, you just, I mean, when you're making art, there is no right or wrong. It's just what you want, how you feel. And you know what, if you don't like it, you can just paint over it, or you can just add to it, cover it up a bit. Um, that's all the paint I'm going to use, although I hate wasting paint. So I'm just going to also put a bit of paint from the brush. Here. Now it's a beautiful rainy day here where I live, which, um, you know, is something that 
some people find hard. I mostly love the rain. I think it's what you call a pluviophile, if I'm correct. Uh, oh, and be careful. So here's something I'm learning. The tissue paper will actually stick. We don't like that at all. Definitely don't like that. So I'm just going to go over that with my brush. No panic involved. Really no need to panic because it's just making it up as we go. And the thing about art is no one knows it's not like we've written a business plan for our art and said this is what it's going to look like <laughs> and um, you have to stick to it because that's not the case at all um, oh look at that drip see I actually quite like that drip I'm going to leave that so um, just draw that brush a bit more Yeah, so, you know, there really is no rules when it comes to art. You do what you want to do and you make it work for you. And you know what? The thing about art is there are going to be people who hate your art and then there are going to be people who love it. Or they're indifferent. Art is so subjective so it really doesn't matter. The, the main thing is that you enjoy it and you love it and you're doing it because well I do it because it's um, like mindfulness for me. It helps me stay in the moment and present and also I thoroughly enjoy it and I can't believe I only discovered <laughs> that I could be an artist and I still struggle to use that word I can't believe that I discovered arting at the age of 50 like 50 years I have wasted not doing something that I completely and utterly adore and um, thankfully I'm so grateful that I have found it how did I find it well I got diagnosed with ADHD in January 2020 which was just last year pre um, COVID really coming out and um, changing the whole life scape for everybody. So that diagnosis has helped me because I got put on medication and it was a trial at first and that medication has absolutely been life changing. It's helped me it's helped me um, focus and it's helped me harness something that you know I didn't know I could do <laughs> and it completely gives me so much joy and pleasure. I mean, I have sold some pieces. I've had some minor success. But you know what? I'd do it no matter what. It would just be a um, pursuit, a, a piss, uh, pursuit of pleasure that I would just do no matter what. What would I do with my art? Who knows? I mean, I have an abundance of art. I donate it to charities if they want it for fundraising um, and local community groups. 
as well. Um, I can't keep on to, I can't hold on to all of it. In fact, I currently don't even have any art of my own hanging in my home. But that's gonna change. I'm going to hang some of my art. Wow, this is just looking so beautiful and I'm really, really happy with how it's coming along. This isn't the finished work. This is just one layer of background to give the art some depth. Actually, I wonder if give a couple more drips. There. I really do like those drips right there. So there you go. I might post a photo of my finished piece on my art Instagram page, which is art from the psych ward, the same as this YouTube channel.